The CPU wars are finally heating up. And no, I'm not just talking about Intel CPUs running stupid hot. Got he. This is Intel versus AMD in 2020. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into PC hardware, gaming, and streaming content, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and a little bell so you don't miss a single upload. Anyways, let's get to it. Intel has finally responded in what I would call a proper way to AMD's rapid consumer desktop superiority. The Intel 10th Gen CPUs from top to bottom present a far more attractive option to AMD options than they used to. Hyper-threading is now enabled across the entire range, except for Celerons, which is fine. Those are the lowest end anyways. No doubt, this is definitely a response to the core and thread count superiority that AMD has developed. With all that being said, Intel is doing this still on 14 nanometer, and I'm not sure how many plus signs there are at the end of that 14 anymore. Five? Anyways, let's start from the bottom up, shall we? All prices are trade prices as far as the slides everyone has seen go, which means that they are bulk price per 1,000 units. Expected single unit consumer prices are likely to be $20 to $30 more. The Pentium Gold series coming in with two cores and four threads, with the G6400 having the cheapest price shown at $64. Needless to say, these won't, be, these won't really hold a candle to the $85 Ryzen 5 1600AF 6 core, so the value to these is pretty low. Well, at least for anyone wanting to use their PC for anything more than just basic office use. Where the 10th gen stuff starts to shine is the entry level i3 series. Long story short, what used to cost in the $300 to $400 range in the i7, 6700, and 7700K chips basically now exists as i3s for half the cost. It's pretty crazy, honestly. Well, not really, but the drastic change that AMD brought on in a short amount of time to cause this, that's what is. At the bottom, we have the i3-10100 4-core 8-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo of 4.3 on a single core. 4 cores and 8 threads is still absolutely enough for a rock solid gaming computer and enough even for some basic game streaming too if you lean on something like NVENC. This CPU coming in at $122 with the final consumer price probably landing around $150 will be Intel's shining gem in the budget sector. From there, the speeds and prices go up, but there doesn't appear to be an unlocked variant. The final price of the fastest clocked i3, the 10320, will put it too close to the Ryzen 5 6 core so its value starts to go down a lot. Moving up the stack one more notch, we get into the 6 core 12 thread i5 CPU range. Basically these are i7 8700K CPUs with and without decay for over $100 less only two generations later. Ouch. Depending on where the prices land on the locked cheaper version, these actually might be very competitive in the market with the Ryzen 5 CPUs though, with those cheaper ones coming in between $157 and $262 before consumer markup. So think like $185 to $285 probably. Moving up the stack again, we come into the former top dog range, the i7s. This part hurts. What used to be an i9-9900K is now an i7-10700 or 10700K or KF or just F for probably $100 cheaper than a 9900K ever was. Eight cores, 16 threads on Intel might be as cheap as $320-ish, with the most expensive eight core probably landing around $395. Finally, we've reached the i9 range. At the bottom is the 10900F, then the 10900, then the KF, then the K. Just a reminder, F means no integrated graphics, which means no quick sync or backup graphics for troubleshooting, which translates to lower value for your money. Eight cores, these are not. The AMD effect strikes yet again, pushing these CPUs to 10 cores and 20 threads. If you're an X99 user and got a 7900X, 9900X, or 10900X and didn't need the extra PCI lanes, rip your wallet. My estimated final consumer price these will land at will probably be about $450 for the 10900F at the bottom, then around up to $520 for the big dog 10900K at the top. Anyways, long story short, with these new 10 core consumer i9s and the unlocked i7s, they can turbo up to and past 5 GHz, depending on the SKU. Also, it seems Intel is producing an AMD Precision Boost Overdrive competitor with something new called Thermal Velocity Boost only available on the i9s. 
from what I gather, this will pick the best cores, look at some other variables, which will probably be temps and voltage, and turbo them even higher, up to 5.3 on a single core, or 4.6 to 4.9, depending on SKU, on all cores. What I like about this is that enabling all these features can sort of eliminate the need to manually overclock like it does with AMD Ryzen. There will be situations where overclocking still nets positive results, but it could be in the majority of tests that turning all the automatic overclocking functions is so close to almost as good that you might as well not even bother. I like that. So here's where the versus part comes in, in my opinion. Which current Ryzen CPU is the competitive alternative to the Intel? Current, also including the Ryzen uh, 3, the new Ryzen 3 3000 series. Battle of the value quad cores. i3-10100, $150 estimate, goes up against the $99 Ryzen 3 3100. Winner, Ryzen. Optional winner, Ryzen 5 1600AF for $85 if you can find it and can do with a little less FPS performance. Battle of the mainstream six cores. i5-10400F, no iGPU, no overclocking, $185 estimated price versus Ryzen 5 3600, no iGPU, $175 to $199 currently, and overclockable. Winner, Ryzen 5 3600. But by a narrower margin this time, the i5-10600K isn't even worth considering with how much more expensive it is by comparison. The X100 is better spent on a GPU. Battle of the mainstream eight cores. Overclockable, the i7-10700K, $395 estimated price. Value, the i7-10700F, $325 estimated price. Versus, the Ryzen 7 3700X currently going on sale for about $295. Winner, Ryzen. Against the 10700F, a case can be made if you just want to go Intel. Against the 10700K, well, unless the thing, the only thing that you do is game and want the highest frame rates, the Ryzen wins. But if that's the case, you're probably better suited getting an i5 instead and putting the money savings to a better GPU. Battle of the high-end consumer chips. Overclockable, the i9-10900K, 10 core, $520 estimated price. Value, the i9-10900F, 10 core, $450 estimated price versus the Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core. Winner, Ryzen 9 3900X again. Unless the only thing you do is game and want the highest frame rates, the Ryzen wins. But again, if that's the case, then you might as well save the money and get an i7 or even the i5 and put it towards the GPU. If you're a streamer and want multitasking plus FPS, I suppose a case can be made, but it's also hard to deny the extra multi-threaded performance of the 12 core 3900X that you'll need because it also gets really great FPS in games. Something can be also said for the, I, the Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core, which games as good as the 3900X, but has even higher multi-threaded performance. And it's gonna be real, probably not too far off the cost of the i9 10 core. <laughs> All right, that was a lot of information. If you made it this far, drop a comment down below telling me what you would go with in each of these situations and why. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, do all the things. Oh, don't forget, I also stream every Friday on Twitch at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. Link is down in the description below. Drop a follow, would appreciate that. Anyways, talk to you all later, bye. Also, right over here, we have tons of related videos. We got a big old backlog of stuff. Make sure you wanna check all that stuff out. Click one. Click one if you haven't already. There's all sorts of stuff. You wanna see us, me looking at uh, memes? I got that too. Yeah. Click one yet? Come on. <laughs>